More than 100 people are reported to have been killed in Gaza as they tried to reach a convoy carrying food aid. Crowds of people had gathered to get close to the lorries. Israel's military told the BBC tonight that it killed a handful of people they believed were a threat. A Palestinian witness told the BBC that most of those who died were run over as the aid convoy moved away. In the last hour, the UN Security Council has been meeting behind closed doors to discuss the situation. It comes on the day that the Hamas government says more than 30,000 people have been killed in the territory since this conflict began in October. Israel launched a campaign to destroy Hamas, which is designated a terrorist organization by the UK government, after its gunmen attacked southern Israel on the 7th of October, killing more than 1,200 people and taking more than 250 hostages. More than 130 are still missing. In a moment, our security correspondent Frank Gardner will look at who has died in Gaza during this war. And our international editor Jeremy Bowen is here to discuss what might happen next in this conflict. First, our special correspondent Fergal Keane reports from Jerusalem on today's events near Gaza City as food supplies were driven through the north of the territory. <laughs> The hunger created by war made this tragedy. That is a fundamental fact of what happened today. The dead and wounded were starving people, simply hoping to feed their families. I am one of the wounded. I was on Al Rashid Street. We were there all day in order to get food for our children but we paid for that aid with our blood. <laughs> Thousands had gathered in the pre-dawn darkness. They'd heard trucks were coming with aid. There were farmers, mechanics, our BBC cameramen, teachers, a doctor from a local hospital. <laughs> An Israeli drone filmed people crowding the aid trucks. It is a striking depiction of human desperation. The military said tanks were securing the convoy to ensure aid was distributed and blamed people in the crowd for the chaos. Some began violently pushing and even trampling other Gazans to death, looting the humanitarian supplies. The unfortunate incident resulted in dozens of Gazans killed and injured. The army also said troops opened fire, first in the air as a warning, and then at the legs of people it said posed a threat to soldiers. Watch this man crawling along the ground, away from the food convoy. Hospitals in northern Gaza say they treated many gunshot wounds. After the Israeli military stopped shooting, we went back to get our aid. This survivor was shot and run over. By the time I got flour and some canned goods and took it down from the truck, they shot at us. They shot me and the truck driver left and ran over my leg. We go to get flour for our children. We have been eating animal feed for two months, and even that ran out. What are we supposed to do? Where are we supposed to go? This incident comes on a day when Gaza marks a reported 30,000 deaths since the war began over four months ago. There is the dying that happens in the open and suddenly. And there is the hunger silently attacking life. In Kamal Adwan Hospital, there are babies with severe malnutrition, like Ahmad Musa. This child is suffering from severe dehydration due to lack of milk. His mom breastfeeds him, but she hasn't eaten, and there is no artificial milk. He was rescued from the rubble when he was one month old. He lost 24 members of his family. 
The girl in the red incubator died as our cameraman filmed, an already serious medical condition worsened by hunger. Nearby, great struggles still for little bodies. Fergal Keane, BBC News, Jerusalem. Well, as we've heard, the Hamas-run health authorities in Gaza say more than 30,000 Palestinians have been killed since Israel started its military action in October. BBC Verify has been examining how many of those killed were members of Hamas. Here's Frank Gardner. Yeah, BBC Verify has been covering this war ever since the October the 7th raid on Israel. It's a war that has ravaged one of the most crowded places on Earth, home to over 2 million people. The red areas on this map show all the parts of Gaza that have been destroyed since the start of the campaign. So how has this 30,000 deaths figure been arrived at? It's based on the number of dead bodies brought to hospitals and then identified. The World Health Organization has previously endorsed Gaza's health ministry casualty figures as being credible. If anything, 30,000 could even be an underestimate due to bodies still buried under the rubble. So let's break this down. As you can see from this graph, the vast majority of those killed have been women and children. Nearly half of Gaza's population is under 18. Separating out civilian deaths from Hamas fighters is not easy. Those fighters are often embedded amongst the civilian population. Some are in uniform, some are not. Israel has accused Hamas of using Gaza's civilian population as human shields. But there is no question that those civilians are suffering the brunt of Israel's military operation. So how many Hamas and other militant fighters have been killed? At the start of the war, it was widely assumed Hamas had around 30,000 fighters. On February the 19th, Hamas reportedly admitted 6,000 of their fighters had been killed, but they later denied that. As of today, the Israeli military say they have killed at least 13,000 fighters, some of whom, Israel says, were as young as 16 or 17. But in the end, the most shocking thing about these 30,000 deaths is the extraordinarily high proportion of civilians killed. That's down to a combination of a densely packed residential area from which there is no escape and overwhelming Israeli firepower. This conflict is now the most lethal one for Palestinian civilians since the creation of the State of Israel. Frank, thank you. Our security correspondent, Frank Gardner. Well, violence continues as well on the West Bank. Israeli emergency services said two Israelis were shot dead there today. Let's talk about where the conflict overall goes from here. Our international editor, Jeremy Bowen, is with me. And Jeremy, Israel, of course, says it doesn't have a choice. It says it has to destroy Hamas because of those attacks on the 7th of October. Uh, where does that assertion look today? Well, let's think back at the very beginning of all of this, I think on day one, um, Mr. Netanyahu, the Prime Minister, said Israel would deliver a mighty vengeance against its enemies. It would destroy Hamas and it would cripple its capacity for taking military action or governing. Now, the Israeli government, and most Israelis would agree with this, even though many of them don't like Mr. Netanyahu, they say that Hamas uses the people as human shields, and that is why so many of them, so many civilians, have been killed. But, you know, around the world, uh, Israel has suffered severe reputational damage. To put it mildly, the International Court of Justice investigating what it calls plausible allegations of genocide against Israel. Today, one of many comments, but Volker Turk, the UN human rights chief, talked about the unprecedented level of killing and maiming of civilians by Israel. He also roundly condemned what Hamas had done. But a few weeks ago, Antony Blinken, the US Secretary of State, said, just because Israel has suffered so much, that means there's no license for them killing Palestinian civilians in the way that they have been doing. And, and all of that then, any prospect, as you are always asked, of a ceasefire? Well, you know, look at those scenes, look at those desperate scenes in Gaza today. Let's hope that there are prospects for one. Joe Biden said there might be one by the end of the weekend, but today he said this is going to make it much more difficult. So no, I don't see one at the moment. They're too far apart. And the impact of this event 
will definitely make that harder. And one big lesson about this all as well, there's been 100 years, more than 100 years of conflict over that land between Jews and Arabs, and there has never been a military solution.